Hello, friends. That was a crazy storm that came through our area last week, and it has left a lot of folks uh, in the world of hurt when it comes to water damage and water getting into their homes. Uh, we've had close to, I think it was like 53 calls, something in the first uh, 10 days of the month. Uh, and that's, that's a call volume for a normal month for us. And this summer we've had uh, like 117 in May, 105 in June. I don't know what July's number was, um, 80 something. But 50 calls in the first 10 days of the month because of that storm. And a lot of them related to wind blowoffs, water damage. And we've been going crazy trying to get our crew around to each and every one of those and get these things quickly fixed as quickly as we can. So this customer sent us a video of water coming in through a crack in her living room ceiling and wanted to see if we could get out and figure out what was causing it. So I got here this morning and we climbed into the, the attic, comes right through here to these two rooms. And then I was able to crawl underneath in front of that dormer on the other side to see where the damage was. And there was a giant wet spot in the ceiling where the plywood was completely just water damaged and, and nasty. And I started pulling the insulation up and you could see um, where this leak uh, was in there and there was some uh, real damp area of drywall around underneath that. So we'll have to cut all that down. It's probably a four foot by 10 feet of drywall ceiling we got to replace. But I want to walk you through this dormer and what the problem was. And it's a simple, uh, such a simple issue that could have been easily avoided. So we may wind up doing the same thing on this one over here. But come on over and uh, I'll give you a tour of what we found. So we spent the morning kind of taking this apart and taking the siding down and taking the shingles off the other side. And I still got to finish tearing this side apart, but uh, we, we found the issue. So here we go. We'll start with the bad side first. And this is where she has some significant damage downstairs. I'm sitting here taking this apart, trying to find where the problem is. And sometimes we'll find that these corner posts are just too hard to push down into the shingles and they create a dam and it allows water to back up into this hole. Now, I was looking at that and it really wasn't that tight. There was some debris in there and we actually found where uh, leaves had traveled across. They'd gotten in that uh, J channel at the top, gotten underneath each lip of each layer of the siding and had traveled across. And there's no house wrap here, so I was worried that that might be the issue. And we're taking it apart and taking it apart. And I got nice ice and water shield down here that somebody had put in and that's beautiful. They made one fatal mistake and the reason why she's got leaks now. This piece of flashing needed to go in first. And instead, they put the side piece of flashing in first over here to the side. And then uh, this was, put this back how it was. That was up on top, but they had put this piece in first and wrapped it around. Why is that a problem? You think that would be beautiful. It looks wonderful. It's exactly how it should be, right? And then this is down. Well, here's the challenge. Any water that comes down this edge surface tension allows it to come around this corner right here. So we can get the camera over there so you can see it. Comes down this wall, surface tension brings it around behind your capping in the front. And when that happens, all of this, all across here, got soaked. If this ice and water shield had come up the wall, that would have helped prevented this. All they had to do is bring this ice and water shield four inches up this wall, and we would not be having this conversation today. If they had simply layered this correctly, if they had put this piece on first with this piece of flash in here and this piece around the front like this, and hopefully they wouldn't have cut that too far. But if it was like this, we probably would not be having this conversation today. But because they made this one simple mistake of layering that in first and this one in second, she's got water damage in here. We got probably $1,500 worth of drywall work downstairs and another couple hundred dollars in painting. Um, total repair bill on this. It could be getting close to about three grand by the time we finish repairing this, putting this back together and fixing all the damage inside. And we probably will see if she wants us to explore the other side. But if the guy who did the aluminum or the lady, whoever it was, put this in first, put that in second so that this is in front and had run this ice and water shield up the face ever so slightly, we would not be having this conversation today. It's mission critical that when you're doing capping, when you're doing flashing, uh, they had somebody redo these windows uh, recently and they put replacement windows in instead of uh, new installation would have been nicer because then you can really attach them to the house properly. But when you're doing this stuff, if you don't get the layers right, it's gonna leak. And when it leaks, you're gonna have other damage. So we'll take a look at some of the rest of what's going on here. Um, 
they've only got about a quarter inch of overlap on this Tyvek coming down into the window. But I'm guessing the guys who put the window in did put the Tyvek in. Why they didn't buy a new install window for this, I don't know. But it's a replacement. They built a jam, and then they capped the jam. You had this thing so far apart anyways, you might as well just put a new installation window in that had the integrated nail fin. Uh, they did tape something, and so they probably taped their, uh, hopefully they taped. Nope, they didn't. Tape's in first. Tape runs across, and then the window's set here. I'm not sure why they did that. If this had been a new install window, um, set the window into a bead of uh, silicone, and then run the window tape over that flashing and start from the bottom and work your way up. And the same rule here, start from the bottom, work your way up. This piece of metal should have been in first. This piece of metal should have been in second, but because they put this one in first, it leaked because the surface tension allowed that water. And you get a little dam here. Let's put it back the way it was. You get any kind of a dirt dam where you've got junk filling in here, that's gonna allow the water to back up, fill up like a dam, like the Conowingo, and come right back up and flow across there. And so all of this damage underneath and a big giant soft spot in the roof. There's about eight inches worth of damage inside and then down into the drywall down below. So let's come over to this side over here. And I just started taking this apart when I finally realized exactly what the cause of this was. Because I took the first one apart and it didn't hit me right away. I'm like, what's going on? But then this side made it real obvious. Because here they've got some caulk that hopefully helps kick it out right here. But if that caulk wasn't there, this would have run right around the back because this metal when I first took it apart, was actually a little bit proud. It was sticking out just a little bit to the side, creating a dam, some place for it to catch. Water can come down, run right behind there. And there's not much damage here, but it's soft and it's wet. So something's been going on. Uh, and there's a pretty good chance that that dormer is set up the exact same way. So we know how we're gonna fix this one. I just put a phone call into Norm. He's out on another job site, uh, putting some ridge vent back together that blew off. He's gonna bring me the sheet metal break and I'm probably gonna wind up fabricating a new piece of metal for here. We're gonna bring that ice and water shield up onto this wall. Then we're gonna put this piece of metal in first. Then we're gonna wrap these pieces around the side second. Then we're bring tie Tyvek down over this so it's layered on top of here. So anything that comes down has to come out. Same thing on the side. We probably should get some Tyvek on that, bring it down, make sure it's out in front so we're protecting that OSB. And then we can take the shingles and put it all back together. So it's it's the simple things. It's just get because they had the side on first, because I guess they thought it looked pretty, and then put the face piece on second. No one's ever gonna see it. Put the bottom when you when you cap a window, when you cap anything, you start at the bottom, you work your way up because water is gonna flow downhill. So you want the tall the outermost layer up high so it continues to shed. So this goes on first, this comes around it. We can put a little bit of goop in that corner, but I don't want to rely on goop. I want to have ice and water shield up here. I want to have ice and water shield up the other side and make it so that we know that it's not just done, that it's coat built. Um, so that's where we're at with this. I'll go back and give you the wide view for those of you who joined us late. So we've got this dormer here and uh, she was having leaks on the far side of it. And I crawled into the attic and we looked and we found a wet spot in the ceiling and we took some measurements, figured out exactly where it's coming from. Came from the roof, took the siding apart on the other side first to look for stuff, took all the shingles apart. So the next thing I got to do to finish repairing this is I got to bring, take the shingles off on this side, take some shingles across the bottom so that we can put all those steps in that I just talked about. So if you're having water damage, uh, we are still taking phone calls. We're a little backed up now because like I said, we got 53 calls in the first 10 days of the month. Uh, so we're doing everything we can to keep our contracted jobs going, but also squeezing in some of these emergency repairs as well. Give our office staff a call weekdays, 9.30 in the morning until Two in the afternoon at 484-748-0008. Choose option two for Cope Construction Renovation, extension two for new projects. We are trying to get to everybody just as quickly as we can. We kind of have triaged the list with those who actively have water coming in at the sort of the top most, most important priority. If you've got a siding blow off, um, that's on there, but it's, it's a little bit further down than the people who have active leaks. So we're just trying to triage that and, and treat the most critical patients first and uh, make sure that we get uh, those people dry that need to get dry and then we can handle the wind blow-offs and some of the more minor things where you've got house wrap or stuff to help protect you. Um, so we know it's, it's, it's taken a couple days for us to give you a date for when we're coming, uh, but we're just doing the best we can to keep up. The office staff, we got Diane, Suzanne, and Tracy all cranking, trying to get things done, and the guys out here in the field making stuff happen. We just hired a new guy under our crew last week, so he's helping out, and we are actively looking for at least one more really skilled person Maybe a handyman person who can help augment some of what I'm doing out here in the field so that we can keep up with these. So you know somebody who's 
skilled in the trades and looking for a job, have them give us a call. We're looking for good people. Um, you know, somebody who can do a little bit of everything is always helpful, but a uh, plumber or electrician, uh, somebody who's looking for work, somebody who doesn't mind a little roofing, that would absolutely be helpful. So we've got a pretty long list back at the office. The ladies are doing their best they can to triage, prioritize, and then group things geographically so we can be smart about how we're taking care of people and getting things done. Um, so if you're waiting for us to get to you, uh, we do have you on the list. Feel free to you know, send us another Facebook message or put a phone call and just find out where we're at. Uh, office staff's available 9.30 to 2 weekdays, and they'll be happy to try to give you an update of where we stand. Uh, I know they started filling the schedule for me for next week, for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, for me to go out and take care of some more of these emergency stuff. And uh, we had at least one tree branch. I had to cut off a roof and patch a roof real quick. And so then they're going to deal with the insurance company and see where that goes. So. Lots of little things we're just trying to crank and get through as everybody as we can. We figured out what the problem is here, so I'm going to spend the rest of the, uh, we're in the afternoon, aren't we? The first part of the afternoon getting this fixed. And then I've got some windows to go measure for a siding window. Uh, we're re residing a whole house and new windows all the way around. Uh, so we have to go and get final measurements on that so we can get a final quote from the uh, supply house so we can finalize that contract that ready to go. The basement Michael is working on drywall today we're going to be launching a video series on that so those are coming out I just put the first one up so you can see where that project started and keep an eye here on our Facebook page in the next couple of days and we'll uh, give you updates on that we are starting a uh, deck expansion project probably on Monday or Tuesday next week and so we'll have a video series going from that check out our YouTube page uh, there's a link here on our Facebook page to that uh, we're trying to get to 100 subscribers so we can claim our custom URL at the top so if you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel that would be awesome go find the link uh, down here on our Facebook page that I put up earlier in the description of the first finished basement job. I gave you a, a 50 second teaser of the basement, but you got to click over to YouTube if you want to see the rest of it. So subscribe to us there so we can start going uh, on that channel. So that's what's going on. I know some of you folks are joining us late. We want to thank you for hopping on the Facebook Live. This will repost to our page in a few minutes here and you can, you can watch and, and I'll explain exactly what we found with this dormer, exactly why it's leaking and what we're going to do to fix it. And you can walk through that so you can better understand it. We'll get to everybody just as quickly as we can. And we look forward to serving you soon. This is Drew in beautiful West Grove, Pennsylvania with Cope Construction and Renovation. We are your Pennsylvania Home Improvement Contractor number 88078. Remember, we're finished with your project. You'll be proud to say it's not just done. It was Cope built. We'll catch you guys in another video. Bye for now.